Hello and welcome, I'm Dr. Nicola and this is Aspen Talks Health where we learn about alternative healing modalities and how to live a life full of compassion and health. Part of being healthy is not only just nutrition and exercise and access to clean water and air and a sense of community, it's also a sense of contribution. When you find your true purpose in life, that brings such a deep sense of security and joy that it resonates throughout the rest of your life and you just show up so much kinder and loving in every way. And you'll be surprised how your health choices change. We'll discuss that towards the end. But one point I wanted to make is there is the fastest way to getting to finding your purpose is hiring a coach. The fastest, best money you could possibly spend on yourself is finding a coach. And because it's human nature, we excel when we are when we are pushed, when we are held accountable, when a good coach helps you find your purpose and helps you pull out those limiting beliefs and get rid of those. And I, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm pretty sure that there isn't an athlete on this planet that has made it to the Olympics without the, uh, a coach behind them. So for that very reason, I have invited Jeff Patterson. He was my personal coach and literally the reason why I'm sitting in the seat today. He is. Uh, he coaches game changers to radically increase their impact in the world. He is the owner of Aspen Success Coaching and he, his private coaching roster is the who's who's of leaders in business and in media. We are going to discuss today uh, the power of finding your big thing and how you can unlock the real you, the, the you that you've really wanted to become for a long time. Welcome, Jeff. Honored and so excited to be here with you, Dr. Nicola. Uh, my pleasure. I'm actually kind of nervous. It's funny because I feel like I'm sitting amongst my professor who's going to grade me. So um, I'm glad I made it through my intro. <laughs> um, so let's start. How do you define a game changer? A game changer is someone who is bold enough, audacious enough to think they can change the world. Mm, love that. And... Um, some people are successful, some people are high achievers, but not everybody is a game changer. And in my work with people, um, as you know from our working together and, and working with people from all different walks of life, my passion is helping them to unleash a version of themselves that they've been dreaming about, yearning for, and maybe haven't found the way to bring it out. And just because you're successful does not mean you're changing the game. Yeah, it's so true. So we're going to go over the five keys. You have a book coming out. Tell us about that real yes, quick. Yes, thank you so much. It's called Game Changer. Yes. And um, create your big thing and unleash the real you. Excellent. And so I talk about in the book the five keys that will unlock the game changer in you. Yeah. And this comes through you know more than 20 years of being a professional coach and working with high performers from all over the world. Um, there are certain things that I know will help someone who's e even maybe the best in the world at what they do to go to a new level or to transition into a new genre and truly make a difference. So the five key principles are, number one, yes. know you are more than you think. Huge. We are more than our circumstances. We're more than our personalities. We're more than our education. We are, we're infinite. There is a part of us that is much bigger than our humanity. It's our spirit. And oftentimes we walk around on this earth thinking we're these little human limited selves. Right. And while we are flesh and bone, there is a part of us that's much bigger. When we remember this part of us, we know that it's not just us doing the work. And we can tap into a power that's bigger than our minds and our intellect and even our experience. This is what allows game changers to take big steps forward that defy the odds. Yeah. So that's number one. Know that you're more than you think. It's the ability to tap into something greater. The fact that we can actually tap into the universe, uh, the universal energy is how I call it. Some mm. people call it God. Mm -hmm. But it, it, there's so much power, I think, when you're aligned with your purpose. Everything comes in to serve you. And, and so much more than you can possibly imagine. Like everything I need comes to me now. Yeah. It's amazing. And that can sound really out there. You know, there are times in my life where that seemed really out there, yeah. which leads me to the second point of unlocking the game changer within, and that is have a big thing. Yes. Now, a big thing is not just a goal. It's not just something that would be great if you did it. A big thing is big. It's scary. 
you may think it's impossible. It's a, a book to be written. It is a, a race to be won. It's a mountaintop begging you to touch it, and you can't get there from where you are right now. Yeah. Meaning, it demands that you transform into your greater yet to be in order to reach it. And that's part of the value of having a big thing, is not just getting there and having the big thing, but it is who it unlocks and what it ushers forward inside of us, who we become in the pursuit of it. Yeah. So having a big thing is an essential of a game changer. You won't find a game changer that doesn't have a big thing. They have a huge project. They're up to something. They're wanting to create something. And my work is really helping people to unlock that big thing because we all have one. It's just sometimes buried beneath layers of busyness, distraction, and avoidance. Yeah. The coaching part that helped me, you taught me about the three archetypes. Mm. And I'll explain them real quick. The first one was artist, which is what I thought I always was because I'm creative. So mm -hmm. I, I was creating these products and then not being able to sell them. Uh, the second is the entrepreneur. They help curate the artists. Basically, you're promoting other people for good. And the third is the architect operations, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, the, the artist and the leader manager and then the entrepreneur innovator. Okay, so the leader manager, I knew I was not. I'm terrible at details. <laughs> and and I've, the, such good things have happened since I've hired a virtual assistant and someone to handle all the back end of this show. Mm -hmm. I, I Finally, I have all the time I need to then just create the content, which is such a pleasure for me. Yeah. Um, but it was understanding, shifting from the artist to the entrepreneur that really it clicked for me that I, I'm, I'm working the wrong angle of my strengths. Yeah. Yeah, that became apparent in, yeah. in our conversations because it was taking 10 times more energy yes. and effort to do certain things, but there were things you were doing without any effort. And so we really looked at what that sweet spot was for you and put you in it and then and that's when things really started to change. Right. I had created the diabetes program. Yes. And every ounce of me didn't want to sell it. Every, I was like a struggle every single day to even look at it. And then as soon as they're like, I want, I want to broaden that. I want to help people in all areas of health. I just, I don't want to just stick with diabetes. That's yes. when it, Yes, magic you were happened. forcing yourself into being the artist of teaching a program. Right. When you wanted, you keep, you kept seeing all these places where you wanted to innovate and right. these opportunities you wanted to maximize, but you were so busy trying to do what an artist would do, which is the one thing they just want to do, right. and you were you were not in your wheelhouse. So once we made that shift together, that actually opened a doorway, which I think allowed your big thing to pop for you. Yeah, and you know, ironically enough, I'm learning about all the different factors that come into health. And it, there's not just one cause of diabetes. It's not just too much sugar or too much fat in your diet. It's uh, adverse childhood experiences. It's antibiotic use. It's mm. mold in your environment. I mean, there, there's the list is, that's when you overflow. It's not just genetics. Yeah. It's, it's you pile on all these different factors and then your body breaks down and, and whatever the, you know, your genetics qualify you for, <laughs> you know? That's so, fascinating. Yeah, so the show has taught me that. That's incredible yeah. in such a short amount of time. Yeah. I mean, I remember us sitting in my office and me asking the question or us exploring, what's your big thing? You were like, I really want to identify my big thing. Yeah. You'd been pursuing the one thing, you know, which was the diabetes pro program, but once we asked that question, it had you opening up to finding the answer. And that's one of the keys to anybody finding their big thing is to start pursuing it. Yes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just start pursuing it. Right. Take this first step. Yes. So having a big thing is the third element of being a game changer yes. or unlocking the game changer within. The, um, the next piece, the next key, is to build your world around your big thing. Hmm. So it's not enough to just have a big thing. Some people know their big thing, but they're scared of it. In yeah. fact, most people are afraid that their big thing is too crazy, too big, unrealistic. Yeah. That's why a lot of, a lot of us avoid it to a, you know, to a certain extent. But making it primary, making it important, having it be the thing and building your world around that changes the game. It has you committing, it has you going all in. And that's scary for a lot of people. But when you do, your big thing will start to pull you, will start to inspire you, will start to um, talk to you, if, if you'll pardon the expression. It'll, it'll guide you in ways that you couldn't guide yourself. That's true. 
So the big thing is a motivator is a force that no coach, no mentor, no family member can substitute for. Mm -hmm. And I have a belief that most of our issues personally are because we are not honoring our big thing. We're not asking that question and going for it. Um, and there's, there's a number of factors as to why we do that. Before we get to that, how do you help your clients see their big thing or find their big thing? What if someone's sitting out there going, I'm, I'm a mom, I don't have time, I, uh, you know, it seems too overwhelming, the, you know, yeah. their laundry list is long. So how do you find it? Yeah. Well, it starts by just asking the question. We get the answers to the questions we ask. So yeah. if you ask the question, what's my big thing? What is that thing deep down I'm yearning to do? Not just what I want to do, but it represents who I want to be in the world. Ask that question. Journal about it. Meditate on it. Ask your friends if they have ideas about it. Hire a coach with the express intention of uncovering it. Yes. And um, that's, that's the first place I would start. I would go total blue collar grassroots and just like set the intention of clarifying it for yourself. Yeah. My two techniques is what lights you up, mm. what brings you joy, and also sometimes um, what makes you really angry. You know, mm. like the livestock production, the way the cruelty that's happening yes. to animals is my, like that is my source of passion. Um, and also, uh, I heard once, your mess is your message. Mm, I love that phrase. Isn't it amazing? So, uh, for me, it was, it was diabetes and it was uh, the alcohol and uh, it was just messy. My life was messy and that kind of directed me mm -hmm. to where to go. Yeah, and, and we can chat more about specific steps that a, you know, an individual can take to find their big thing for sure. Mm. Um, the next important key Please. is uh, after commitment or going all in and building your world around your big thing, is the fourth key, and that is the willingness to shift who you're being to match your big thing. Yes. Most of us think our personalities and who we are is fixed and that we can't change it. You know, I am who I am and you're, you're not going to change me. I grew up in an environment where, you know, a zebra doesn't change its stripes. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But who we're being is the byproduct of our thinking, our focus, our habits, and our intention those things can all be changed. Mm -hmm. So we can shift who we're being. And game changers shift who they're being to match their big thing. People who aren't game changers shrink their big thing to match their comfort zone and to um, match their current personality. Great point. So true. Overnight, I shifted. As soon as I did, th this was important to me enough where I knew how I needed to show up. I needed my full brain capacity. I stopped with all the partying and I sh I'm showing up so much bigger, so much bigger. And it was because I, I connected with this purpose and it was so important to me to, to, yeah, to step it up. And I shifted who I'm being. It's so true that you can. The way of being is everything. Yep. You know, and, and that's the power of a big thing because your big thing will help you to shift your way of being in a way that you'd have a hard time manufacturing on your own. I mean, yeah. you yourself had tried to make certain changes in your lifestyle and that for years you weren't able to. Right. But you identified your big thing, you committed, and here it is a couple months later, those things are gone. Yeah. And that's what I call the big thing effect. And that can shift your way of being. And the reason we don't have what we want in life, it's not simply because of what we're doing. It's because we're not being who we need to be. Yeah. Most of the actions we're not taking is, is not simply because we don't know what to do. It's because we're not being a certain quality. We're not bringing forward certain attributes in ourselves. And if we did bring those attributes forward, the action would be a natural byproduct, just like the changes that you made. Yeah. And this is how this approach, you know, in terms of the way that I coach, I think is really powerful because it's not you trying to force yourself and like just willpower. It's about lining up your true motivation in a way that, that brings it out of you, mm. that that's, it's more authentic and it's more inspired than it is you forcing yourself to try to make something happen. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Which leads us to the, the fifth and, and final point of being a game changer or unlocking the game changer within. And that is a game changer uses their big thing in the pursuit of it to serve. Yes. 
they want to bring forward that big thing because they want it to impact the world in some positive way. They may not even know how. Right. Like sometimes you don't know how your big thing is truly going to impact and change the world. Years ago when I wanted to be a coach, I didn't even, there wasn't even the word coach for coaches 20 years ago. I didn't even know that was a career path. Huh. I just knew I wanted to listen and help people and challenge them to go for their big thing. And I never thought it was even a career. And, but I knew deep down, I, I wanted to change the world in some way and I hoped, I just intended that that gift of coaching would somehow change the world. And I couldn't have seen then what I've seen now and the impact it's made in individuals and the impacts of their families and companies and, you know, it's shifted, you know, in some cases countries and the futures of individuals. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to change the world, um, I think the best way to go about doing that is finding your big thing and going for it. Because if you go for your big thing and you commit and play full out, there's no way. There's no way you can't change the world. There's no way the world is not impacted. Yeah. It's so true. It's so tr When you're in alignment, it goes back to what we started with. When you're in alignment with service for the greater good, the universe will make it happen. Will help you make it happen. And and it's it can be. Your wife texted me this morning saying you're helping me by by me being authentic and showing up the way I am, and and every you know every day stepping towards my goals, is helping her show up bigger. Yes. And we all, that's how, the, that's how we help each other. Yeah. Is by every one of us going for a big thing, we give each other permission. Yes. And we encourage each other just by our action. And in this way, we need each other. We can't do this alone. That's why I'm so passionate about getting this message out. Because we can't do this in a silo. We can't do it in our, our caves. We have to come out. We have to encourage each other and challenge each other to go for it. And really band together. Yeah. And, and, and then it makes it, I think it's really fun. Yeah. A relationship that's built on how can I help you reach your big thing is an exciting one. Yes. I mean, those are friendships you love having. Yeah. You know? We had a great time together for six months. It was a blast. <laughs> it was Absolute fun. blast. Yeah. So let's say someone watching knows their big thing. Yes. What is the most important thing they can do to move forward? Drink lots of coffee. <laughs> um, no, that, that was just me this morning. No, the first thing I would have, I would do in that situation or I would have anyone do is make a picture of that desire. Create a vision. Paint the picture of your big thing. What does it look like? What are you doing? How are you feeling? What qualities are you exuding? As if you're a screenwriter, go to the end of the film and see the full successful realization of your big thing as you desire it. Yep. Now this takes courage because the ego is going to go, oh please, that is a pipe dream. Who do you think you are? You really think you're going to be the next Oprah of health? You really think you know, you're going to influence world leaders? You really, that's the ego. Mm. You know, and I think a lot of us think that it's ego to believe we can change the world. But I think it's the opposite. It's your duty. Our so I, wouldn't even, I would go so far as to say it's our soul's desire yeah. to create, to shine. And to hold that back is ego. To say that it's not possible is limiting and egoic. I mean, it's the ultimate, to me, that is self-egocentricism of saying, you know, of what I am and what I'm not. Mm. So um, our soul yearns to shine, our soul yearns to create, our egos are the ones that are limited. And so we want to work with our ego. We want to create an identity and create a way of being that is aligned with our big thing, that makes a difference in the world and matches our joys and our values. And when we do that, you have that alignment and there's a, an exciting you know, flow that starts to happen. Yeah. So going back to your question, what's the first thing you do when you know your big thing? Write down your vision, paint the picture. Yeah. Start visiting that vision every single day. Visit the vision. Your mind doesn't need to believe it. Because if you see it, you don't need to believe it. I mean, when I'm sitting here in front of you right now, if I asked you, do you believe that I'm sitting here right now? That'd be a silly question. Right. Because you have no need for belief. Because I'm here. You see me. Right. The same is true with our imaginative faculties. When we see our future, when we see anything, we connect with it. And we 
our, the part of our brain called the reticular activating system, it actually starts scanning your surroundings for images and individuals and things to bring to you so your subconscious is already working on your behalf. Right. So yeah. create that vision, visit that vision every single day, connect to it. That's that, the first step. That was a very powerful tool. You had me do, right as if it was a year ahead, looking back, and you allow your imagination to go wild. Yes. You know, uh, Oprah was on my show. Yes. Or, you know, whatever, yes. allow it to go. Uh, people are calling me every day to be on my show. And just really allowing yourself to get to that place. And you're right, your brain then starts trying to create that for you. Yes. Uh, and you have the sensing abilities to attract what you want. Yes, it's the first step. It is not the only step. Yeah. There is hard work, there is commitment, there's all those things. But what most people do, and this is the trap that most of us get caught in, is that we try to figure out the how yeah. before we identify the what. <laughs> you need to enter into a how-free zone. Yeah. Let, you know, when the vision is clear, the resources appear. Mm -hmm. So most of the time when people come into my office and they say that they're stuck, they're trying to figure out how to do it. And a lot of people come and tell me, how do I make a billion dollars in my company? How do I double my business over the next two years? How do I become um, a, a Hollywood superstar? How do I be number one in my sport? And the first step is getting clear exactly on what you want. I'll give you an example of that. Um, a number of years ago, uh, a young guy came to me, he was an actor, and said, I want to become a working actor. And I said, well, okay, that's a great start. Tell me what you mean. And he looked at me like, well, what do you mean? What do I mean? That's, I just mean I want to work as an actor. I want to do what I love, which is acting, and make a good living. And, and I said, well, how much is a good living? Is that 50 grand a year, a day, 100 grand? I mean, what, what does that mean? Right. I challenged and pushed him, and it was, very it was difficult because he had resistance to getting clear. He was very... Um, smart kid and from the Midwest had a lot of humble attributes about him and didn't want to like brag about himself and I finally had to practically strong arm him and I said tell me exactly what you want and so he said fine I want to be you know the lead actor on a hit series I want to you know do network commercials I want to make an abundant living you know he, he painted the whole picture I said okay now you're working you're doing it you got a vision um, and he had to do the work, he had to do the other things that I'm talking about, but him getting clear on that vision, catalyzed something, put things into motion. Two years later, he was cast on the hit show Grimm, which ran for, I think, six or seven years. It's in syndication now. His name is Dave Giantoli. And he's a, you know, a big-time uh, television one-hour drama actor. It's wow. a huge boon to his career. He's married to a princess now. You know, I don't think she's a princess anymore, but you know, royalty. His life has blown up, mm. and he's living that vision that he that he wrote down and got clear. So Love when you're it. creating your vision, you want to get specific. You want to get clear. Let yourself be as let it be as big as it authentically wants to be, mm. and that takes courage. We have just a few minutes left, but I wanted to share one of my favorite tools that mm. you gave me. It's, um, so I, I came to Jeff with some money belief issues. I didn't think I had the discipline it took to become successful. I had a few experiences in life where I ran completely out of money and I thought I needed someone to save me. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I, Jeff introduced me to this clicker and he <laughs> gave me the assignment of 10,000 clicks in three weeks. I have all the discipline I need to create great wealth. And I had to do that 10,000. That equates to 500 a day. And let me just tell you, when you have to click 500 times a day, you have no time whatsoever to have any negative thoughts. You're right. That's true. <laughs> so you become this, like, consistent manifester. And, like, you just put all of your brain power towards what you want in life. I am the next Oprah of health. Yes. And, and it is, this is the most in incredible tool. It's so simple and it worked. By, I think by the time three weeks I came back to your office and I was ready to go to strategy. I was like, let's go, we're doing this. Yes. <laughs> you know, and you were like slowing me down. <laughs> <laughs> but this is an uh, incredibly powerful tool. So if you guys are out there, get one of these off Amazon super easy and click your way to what you want in life. It is brilliant. Here's what you can do because we've talked about having a vision. So if you know your big thing or if you have a slight idea about your big thing, write it down. Write down what you know. Don't worry about what you don't know. Then ask yourself, what is one thought 
if I were to believe it consistently, would help me realize my big thing. Write that down, get the clicker, do 10,000 clicks, and do it in a couple of weeks. Same thing, you will shift your way of being based on your focus and based on your belief. So that's one exercise to begin shifting that way of being. And you did that beautifully, and it was, yeah. you know, it was effective. It's very impactful. Very effective. Uh, well, uh, how can uh, my viewers reach you? Thank you for asking. Um, go to my website, aspensuccesscoaching.com. Um, you can also send me an email at jeff at success, at Aspen Success Coaching. Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, at Aspen Success Coaching. Dot com. Send me an email or check out my website, which is very rudimentary, um, but you can get a hold of me through there. Very powerful. Uh, make sure you guys reference that I he found you through the show, please, so that I get yes. credit. <laughs> you get lots of credit. Lots of credit, thank Nicola. You. Um, thank you, Jeff. I'm so grateful. You literally have changed my life. Aww. Yeah, I, I mean that sincerely. And... Um, I, it's been an honor to have you on the show. I'm it's really an, grateful. It's an honor to see the difference you're making in the lives of the city of Aspen and the world beyond. Um, so thank you for letting me be a very small and fun part of that. Huge part of it, but thank you. <laughs> awesome. You guys, check out AspenTalksHelp.com. For more information, I'll put up Jeff's uh, email and contact information as well, so you're, you're, you'll have all that info there. And make sure you subscribe so you get notified of the next coming interviews. You can select which topic you like that you want to hear about, and I'll send those over to you, plus some more articles that are really uh, life-changing and some personal stories that I don't share elsewhere. All right, thanks for tuning in.